Lesson 10, Digital Design Outputs. Technology is an ever-growing field. The interactivity that can be created in InDesign and the methods for exporting that interactivity are also constantly changing. To produce a lesson that outlines exactly what works and does not work for each output option is a mission rooted in failure. It literally changes every day. So instead of outlining exactly what works and doesn't work, let's review some options that currently exist at the time of this recording and talk about ways to stay on top of these ever-changing technologies. We've already exported to an interactive PDF and created an InDesign published online version of our project. If you choose File Export, you can see, via the Format drop-down menu, some of the other options available for exporting InDesign projects. At the time of this recording, that includes creating an Adobe PDF Interactive, Adobe PDF Print, EPS, EPUB Fixed Layout, and EPUB Reflowable, HTML files, IDML or InDesign Markup Language files, InDesign snippets, JPEGs, PNGs, and XML files. Obviously, not all of these are intended for use in digitally output designs, a print PDF being an obvious outlier for our current needs. And then not all of them are as useful as others. The most commonly used digital output files from InDesign are interactive PDFs, InDesign publish online files, EPUBs, both fixed layout and reflowable, and potentially HTML files. Exporting to a JPEG or a PNG can be really helpful to get a static design formatted for a digital output, but neither supports interactivity, so we will not focus on them right now. Let's start with two output formats we have already worked with. As you have created interactive PDFs and InDesign publish online versions of your projects, you have probably experienced things you like and don't like about them. My recommendation is to keep a list of the pros and cons of each file format that you use on a regular basis so that you can reference that list when you are designing. If you find a specific form of interactivity either works or does not work with an interactive PDF or a reflowable EPUB, etc., write it down. The pros and cons I have compiled for interactive PDFs are listed on screen. Do you agree with my list? Would you add to the list or edit the list from your experience so far? My pros are that interactive PDFs support hyperlinks, navigation buttons, and bookmarks. They are a standard file format, meaning almost anyone can open it. They do not need to be internet dependent. They could be, but they don't have to be internet dependent. And we haven't learned about it yet, but they can be tagged for accessibility. My cons are that interactive PDFs do not support multi-state objects triggered by buttons, animation, or embedded HTML codes. If you embed audio and video files, like we learned in a previous lesson, they will not play automatically. You must click to activate them. By embedding content, it increases the file size compared to other digital file formats. And you cannot embed an interactive PDF on a website. You must download the file and open it on your computer. I've also made a list for Publish Online. Admittedly, Publish Online is my favorite option. I find it very easy to work with, and as someone who is the queen of typos, I love that I can push updates, and anywhere the file is currently being used, those updates will automatically fix for the end user. My pros for InDesign Publish Online projects are that InDesign Publish Online supports hyperlinks, navigation buttons, and animation. It also supports HTML codes and embedded audio and video files. And it supports object states. It's also very easy to open because you can open it in a web browser. You can push updates so that if you find something that needs to change, no one has to know any different. The next time they open the file, they'll see the updated version. And it gives you the ability to allow your users to download your project as a PDF or to copy the embed code so they can embed it on a website. My cons are that it is certainly in internet dependent. You must access it through the internet. And that when you download the PDFs, they're not only print PDFs, but they do not include accessibility if you built accessibility into your InDesign file. 
We have not yet learned about fixed layout and reflowable EPUBs, so let's take a minute to understand what they are and where they are used. Then we can start to establish our own set of pros and cons for each. An EPUB is an electronic publication. They are book or publication files used to format large bodies of text for digital outputs. EPUB files are the file format read by digital tablets like the Amazon Kindle. A fixed layout EPUB is very much like a PDF. The design looks just like it would in a PDF, including text and image settings you choose visually in InDesign. Digital magazines often use fixed layout EPUBs. A reflowable EPUB is one that can be controlled by the user, which means when decisions are made, it may need to reflow or repopulate the text. For example, a user can change the typeface size, which would change the amount of text that can fit per page. Users can also change the background color, contrast, and other settings. Reflowable EPUBs are what digital books use, like the Amazon Kindle. Reflowable EPUBs are much more flexible for users, but they are amazingly more difficult to create from an InDesign file. You lose almost all control over your layout. The words are more important than the look and feel in a reflowable EPUB. I've established a list of pros and cons for both fixed layout and EPUBs. You can add to this list if you experiment by exporting to either one of these file formats. My pros for fixed layout EPUBs are that the layouts are designed just like you would design a PDF, so they feel familiar. They are easy to create when you're ready all you have to do is file export and choose to create a fixed layout EPUB. There's no additional preparation needed. When you're formatting your layout, you can format your photos in line with your text. So if you look at the example on the slide here, you can see that the layout bounces back and forth from text to pictures, text wraps around pictures and things like that. All of the shapes, colors, and typefaces that you choose will remain in the exported file. The cons are that because you have full control compared to its counterpart, the reflowable EPUB, you're going to have much larger file sizes. The content does not reflow, so it does not give the user as much option to be able to control what it looks like. And you're limited in the number of devices that can display fixed layout EPUBs. There are certain devices that can only display reflowable EPUBs. Reflowable EPUBs um, allow users to have a lot of control about how they experience the, the book or the text that they're reading. And so there is a high level of user experience that happens when using a reflowable EPUB. Because a reflowable EPUB essentially takes all the bells and whistles out of your project, you end up with very small file sizes. And they're very flexible you can view them on many different size devices. You don't have to reformat the design for different sizes and different formats. Some cons are that you have very little control over the layout. The layout gets exported as a very primitive HTML file. Images will not display in line with your text. So if you have text and images in your project, the reflowable EPUB when exported will be forced to show a picture and then text, and then a picture and then text. It also requires a tremendous amount of additional setup inside InDesign to control what happens when your project is reflowed. It's a very um, computer programming heavy file format, and so you need to make a lot of decisions in InDesign to determine what that programming will look like. And since we're designers, a huge con is that your layout goes out the window. InDesign projects can also be exported as an HTML file. Take any InDesign file and choose File Export to convert the layout to HTML coding. You will notice some design elements work and some do not. The pros for an HTML file are, is that if you don't know how to code an HTML, exporting a visual layout will provide the coding for you. It allows access to your design via a web link. You can take the coding and you can embed it on a website. You can format this coding for accessibility standards. And a lot of the text formatting, as you can see in the left example on screen, 
will carry over to your design. So it's a quick way to be able to create a rather primitive website if you don't know how to uh, code in HTML. The cons are that it takes your very complex layout and it forces it to be a primitive HTML code. And so you lose a lot of the personality of your design. Overlapping content can disappear. Non-rectangular content can disappear. White content that had a colored background can seem to disappear because your text is white and your background will disappear. And your text and images cannot be formatted inline. You can see in the example on the right side here, it looks like I have a vertical column of embedded videos in my project. But I did not have a vertical column in my InDesign layout. I had three videos that ran from left to right across the page. And essentially it stacks your content, even if you didn't stack it in your layout. As we have already established, technology is always changing. There's no way to learn what can and cannot be done for each digital output option today and consider that the do-all end-all of learning about digital designs. You will need to accept that what you know now may not be accurate six months from now. The best plan of action is to accept this fate and just decide that you're never going to assume that you know something. Always check to make sure your interactivity is still working or is working again or maybe it works now and it didn't work before. My suggestion is to always keep your eye out for new ideas, and the best way to do that is to follow the experts. Use YouTube and other online resources to directly connect with people that are using these technologies day in and day out. If you're not using digital technologies every day, you probably will miss an update, but the people that use them every day will be on top of them. My favorite is Creative Pro, so I recommend always visiting creativepro.com. They have a website and they have a YouTube channel. This is Creative Pro's website. If you go to learn, you can divide the website into categories. We are specifically learning about InDesign in this class, but you could learn about photography and design. When you click on InDesign, it will redirect to resources specific to InDesign. And if you prefer strictly watching videos, you can go to their website on YouTube. It's youtube.com slash C slash creative pro underscore com or just search for creative pro and it'll be the first search result that comes up. They are constantly posting new videos. Vertical alignment of text and InDesign. That's something new so you can click and you can watch that video to learn more.